get y'all guys to shut up. And so I'm gonna take a look here and see what kind of whether it's Christmas in November. So this is our, our new antenna. Um, Raymarine ITC5. I-50, I-60s. More 50s and 60s. It's starting to feel like I'm back in Scotland here. Uh, you know, the, the, but, just because this is how it is when you do these projects. Um, you have to dig into things and it's it's never as pretty below the surface um, so they've got this piece of plexiglass that everything was mounted on uh, and I, uh, the trick with this is going to be to make sure I don't crack it uh, trying to screw screws into it if the screws are too large for the hole it will definitely crack this you know this is basic Lexan plastic and so uh, I, you know really I should I should put a, a, a screw all the way through with a nut on the back side of it I just don't know if there's anything small enough around for that. By the way, this is a five meter um, frame marine spur cable I've got. It's gonna take a fairly long cable to make it back to anywhere where I can plug it in. Uh, but that's that's the way these uh, peripheral units work. They just they just plug right on into into the into one of the uh, um, adapter plugs in the backbone. And so it's a pretty simple thing. These these plugs are actually very, very small in comparison to, to some of the other plugs you see out there. Um, so um, here's hoping that it goes well. So I've just managed to run this extra spur cable here. I've just plugged it in right there. Um, and so afterward, <laughs> always a good idea to just go through and test and turn everything on and make sure it still works because you know, you're back in here jiggling these wires around and you, you, know, you just don't want to assume that it's going to be all okay. Uh, but uh, so far so good. So here I've got an interesting problem. You know, pe the people who previously did this install just left all these wires sitting on top of the, of the, of the companionway hatch and obviously as you pull it back and forth it, they just kind of slide back and forth on top of the lid. And that's all well and good as long as they never pull forward and get caught. And, and, and that's not a good bet to be making. So next question is how do you secure these and I, I'm thinking the answer is I'm going to drill a hole up here and another one over here that can run zip ties through um, maybe I'll just do four one two three four uh, and then I'm going to use a Dremel tool this is really thick it's probably a quarter of an inch of fiberglass I use a Dremel tool to kind of cut up the cut a, a recessed area there so that I can run a zip tie and still have it lay flat uh, so I'm going to give that a try You know, before when I did the NAF pod, I was able to draw these diagrams in well, the equivalent of AutoCAD, but a, but a 3D software system I use, um, and then drill the holes in advance and basically have everything just measured out, in, 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 you know, incredibly well, so that it would so that there would be no issues with alignment or having the the, the units not be um, set up the way they should. And uh, when you have to use these templates, it, you know, this morning I, it took me probably five, four or five hours 
to get everything kind of taped and, and, and made sure again and again before I actually went and drilled anything that I was drilling in the right locations. Um, also this kind of plexiglass is very fragile so if you try to screw a screw into a hole that's too small for it it'll just crack the plastic and obviously I don't have another one of these and no easy way to get another one. Uh, so it was a little bit high stress uh, getting getting these uh, installed. So, so you know take your time if you're gonna do an install like this take your time that's probably the thing that the that the professional installers don't have they don't have time to sit around and mess around with these things and make sure that they're working um, or that they're perfectly centered they, to them good enough is good enough and if you want a, a really professional install you, you almost have to do it yourself or be prepared to pay a lot of money um, so um, you know it's 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 not undoable by a regular person well my upgrade to up to uh, upgrade up to you know better uh, instruments was not without some level of drama. And one of the things that's happening is that I'm not getting any power. Uh, I'm not getting a signal to the ITC5 instrument transducer converter and I was able to get wind data to the ITC5 by, by hot wiring it with this really nice high quality cable uh, but there just wasn't enough of it and so that sent me on a huge search which eventually ended up with me having to mail order this um, these two cables and these are going to be my new transducer cables uh, unfortunately this is what happens when you're dealing with old systems I literally could not find where these transducers enter the system the old CTOC system so I'm just going to basically rewire from the transducers over I soldered this transducer cable in Right there, you might be able to see the shrink tubing over top of it, and the, the wire turns to gray. Uh, it's it's generally not considered a good idea to try to splice these cables, but you know there's just nothing to be done in this case. So what I'm doing here is I'm I'm, I'm adding butyl tape to, to to waterproof this this um, instrument panel. And what's going on in here is a lot of old old wiring, and in normal cases I, I might inclined to cut out the old CTOC1 cabling, but you never know when you might need something like that in the future. If, if you really got yourself in trouble and, you know, bore a bore or something and all you had was old style instruments around, and we do keep all of our old instruments kind of, kind of deep down in the, in the hold someplace in case it, we, there's ever a need. But the, the, the idea here is I'm actually using it to, to, to hold the new cabling, the new CTOC spur cables for these new instruments that, that, that have been installed. And we have had water come down out of the, come down over and through this and down into the top of this hatch. It is waterproof down below. It doesn't, it doesn't make it its way past, but we do see dirt and water kind of dripping out the bottom. And so I don't want that to happen anymore. I'm, I'm trying to make this, even though these are all waterproof, everything in here is waterproof on its own. I, I really don't like the idea of water getting back in behind here. Um, if I can avoid it. And so I'm using, like I said, I'm going to use butyl tape for this. And butyl tape, uh, it, it comes on a roll like this. And it's much easier to get off the roll when it's cold or chillier, um, which it is today a little bit. Um, and somebody might ask, well, you know, why don't you just use a bead of silicon around there? And the answer is because I really don't want to glue this thing in place so it can't be taken off in the future. Uh, this is not a panel that's probably ever come off too many times since the boat um, was commissioned but we want this to be a relatively easy thing to get off if we need to so we're not, we're not gluing it on in such a way that you can't get it off um, and then that's where we're going to go with it those who watch our videos know that i'm just you know absolutely you know retentive about about the aesthetics of of, of work that gets that gets done around here so you know here i am Replacing these with brand new screws uh, make, just to kind of give it that, that new look as much as possible. Um, and it's a small thing, but it's it's the difference between having it look like something that was that was done professionally and and not. The old screws are uh, are definitely uh, got a little bit of rust stain on them. And as people know, stainless isn't really you know 100% salt waterproof it's it, it does get 
um, oxidized. It's not nearly as bad. By the way, one more uh, piece of advice when it comes to working with butyl tape is you don't want to try to cinch all the screws down right away. Uh, what you want to do is get them to snug up a little bit um, to, 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 to get the, the, the tape, the, 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 the um, paste as it were, the tape kind of um, flattened out and then come back at it a little at a time over the course of a day or two and just keep on tightening and it'll find its own level, it'll create its own, create its own gasket. and we'll, we'll be good to go. Uh, as soon as this warms up in the sun, believe me, it's gonna... Uh, it, before I, m I mentioned tr to try not to overdo it with the butyl tape, what'll happen if you're not careful is the stuff will start kind of spooging up around the edges, and, um, and that's what you're trying to avoid. It, it, a, a little of this stuff goes a long way. Mm -hmm.